hello friends <coughs> and welcome to my youtube channel so uh, we are going to continue our game so uh, but before that i want you to fix something so uh, on our player we have uh, animation a rotating animation and uh, in the first frame make sure that uh, your rotation on z axis is zero and on second keyframe make sure it's minus 180 and at the end it should be minus 360 so uh, this will actually give us a smooth rotating animation now uh, let me play the game so here you notice that uh, when our player uh, hit the tile after some uh, time the tile dropped so we don't want our first tile to drop until player jump so uh, to do that i am going to open our player script and in here i am going to add a new variable a private boolean variable and call it first jump. and i am going to set it to true so uh, this will actually keep track uh, whether this is player first jump or not so uh, we need this variable to set to false in our jump function so when the player jumps it means that it is no longer the first jump so uh, when the player drop on onto tile that is our first jump so when we jump that is not a first jump so let me so here here we have our fall tile core doing and before making our tile fall we need to check if it is the first jump if it is first jump we don't want to drop the tile we just simply want to return so this will not execute now uh, save it and go back So now you can see that we are staying on our tile. So uh, next thing we need to do is we need to change the speed. So I'm going to set the time scale from uh, 1.5 to 2. So this will give me give us a more realistic uh, jump. So now we want to generate more tiles because uh, now we only have uh, four to five tiles in our scene and when we jump uh, uh, new tiles are not being generated so in the scene you can see that we have our five tiles so when when i jump new tiles are not being generated so we need to destroy the drop tile and generate a new one so to do that uh, i'm going to create a new script that will that we will apply on each of our tile and i am going to call it tile script and uh, i am going to apply this tile script on our tile prefab so uh, drag the tile prefab into hierarchy and drag this tile script onto tile and make sure that it's there also don't forget to click on apply button and finally remove the tile from the scene now open that script open the tile script and in here we want to check so uh, i have a script here so uh, here uh, on top we have our floating type uh, float type variable call it y position and in the start i am initializing it to the current tile position 
so uh, uh, the first tile that we generate this will store its position so uh, we after saving the uh, position in the up fixed update function we are checking if the transform dot position is less than y position and we are subtracting the uh, value 10 so uh, let me code it again so that so first i am going to create a float variable called y position and in the start y position will be equal to transform dot position dot y so uh, this style script will be on each of the tiles so uh, in, on each of in on each instance the y position will be the current tile y position initial position so when we drop the tile its y position will be decreasing so now we are going to check if y position or simply say if transform dot position dot y if the current tile position is less than y position then we want to destroy this tile so we are going to call destroy this dot transform so uh, what this function will do so uh, let me play it so uh, now you will notice when i jump on the next tile this will uh, get destroyed immediately so i think we haven't applied our script or we have an error so so we did something wrong here so we want to say this dot game object now you will have so let me jump now you have noticed that our tile immediately get destroyed so let me play it again so we don't want it to destroy immediately so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to say minus 10 So when the tile, when our tile will drop and it reaches the distance of minus 10 from its initial position, then it will be destroyed. So let me play it again. So you, I want you to focus on this scene window here. Now you see that when our tile reaches at this point, uh, our tile destroyed got destroyed so after that what we want to do is we want to whenever we destroy one tile we want to generate another one for that we need a reference to our generator function so i am going to say generator And we are going to initialize it find and put our generator game object name here so we have the name tiles generator so copy that and paste it right here and we want its script component so we are going to say dot get component and our component is generator now after that after uh, before destroying we need to uh, initiate another tile so i am going to call the generate tiles function 
right here now let me play it so as you can see that we are generating new tiles here now the next thing we need to do is we need to move our camera with our player so we need our camera to follow our player so for that we are going to create a new c sharp script called camera follow and drag this script onto our main camera so make sure that it's there now open it up and in the update function uh, we are going to say transform dot position equals vector 3 dot smooth damp and uh, this will take three arguments uh, the first one is its current position so we are going to say transform dot position and the next is target so we are going to create a vector 3 called target here and we are going to put target here so we are going to initialize it in a bit and of the third will be uh, velocity so we are going to create a vector 3 called velocity and pass it by reference here and the fourth argument it will take is smooth time so i am going to simply put 0 0.5 here now uh, to uh, the target will be actually our player so we need a reference to our player so i am going to create a public game object called player and in the start we are going to initialize it by game object dot find game object with tag and call it player so uh, the target y x position so our uh, x position will be equal to player dot transform dot position or you can uh, simply create a transform here but i have uh, taken a, a game object so uh, i'll say dot x and the y we also want it to follow on y so player dot transform dot position dot y and the z will be transform dot position dot z now I'm going to copy this so actually we can also uh, uh, do another thing with the camera uh, I will discuss it in later video but for now we are going to play the game So as you can see that our 
camera is now following our player. So uh, another thing that you notice that our uh, camera uh, uh, position itself in on the center so uh, if you don't want to show this empty space what we can do is so if we increase our camera position you can see that we can avoid that blank space so what we can do is in the camera fellow we can add some value here let's say 2f so let me play it again so now you can see that we have avoided some space so if you add 3 here now uh, the next thing we need to do is we want uh, some uh, background for our game so i am going to so i am going to add a background so this one is actually good so i am going to drag and drop it into my assets folder and drag this background into our scene so now you can see that we have a very nice background so i am going to change the camera to camera background color to white and I am going to decrease the alpha of our background. Also, you can position it. Like that. Uh, so now you can see that we have our background and let me change the directional light and we are going to decrease the alpha here or increase it for uh, better. So we also want this background to follow uh, just like camera because uh, now it is static. So uh, we will do that in our next video.